right, Lichitilia in action. A couple of um, demonstrations for you based around the Lichitilia principle that um, reactions try to oppose changes that are made to them. Um, these demonstrations are found in the Heinemann textbook. Um, obviously, it's for VCE chemistry, so we'll get st stuck straight into them. The first one is using a dichromate ion. Hopefully, you can't really see. But And the second one is using the iodine equation. So, moving on. We've got the dichromate um, solution here in a petri dish. Petri dish, however you want to say it. And it is a yellow solution because the chromate ion here is a yellow complex ion. And it's in equilibrium with the orange dichromate ion. We're going to do two things um, to this solution. We're going to first of all add some sulfuric acid. And then we're going to add some sodium hydroxide. We're going to see what happens to this as we add them in. And then we're going to explain why. The equilibrium in this solution is based around this equation here, obviously. Um, so first of all, I'm going to get my pipette and drop some sulfuric acid into the petri dish. And there I go. Starting to add my sulfuric acid. A good few squirts. It says five drops in the demonstration, but we'll do a few extra. Now, let's have a look what happened. And you can see just around where I've um, pipetted in the sulfuric acid, the edges of it are starting to turn a bit of an orangey color. And that indicates we're forming more of this dichromate. Now, why is that forming? Let's have a look. Centralizes around the this one here, the hydrogen ion. The addition of sulfuric acid because it's such a strong acid, what we're actually doing is increasing the amount of hydrogen because it dissociates. We're essentially just adding hydrogen ions to this um, equilibrium mixture. The Chatelia says that if I increase this, what's going to happen is the reaction is going to try and do everything in its power to minimize this change, and therefore it's going to have a forward reaction. So these... Um, hydrogen ions that have added to this solution are going to react with this yellow dichromate and push it forward and create more of the dichromate here. Sorry, did I call that chromate or di... no, either way. The hydrogen ions that I'm adding to it are going to react with this chromate and form more of the orange dichromate. And you can see as I start to stir it around, um, they have a very similar colour but ones that just you can tell is a bit more orangey than the other one. So, the equilibrium is being shifted to the right um, because we've had an increase in our reactants or at least one of our reactants. So therefore we're making more of this stuff here. Okay, and there you can draw with it and it's all funky like that. The next thing we're going to do is add in some sodium hydroxide and we're going to have a look at what effect this has on the colour. So I might just skip forward a little bit. I'm not too sure how long this goes for. I won't skip forward, I'll just let it go. Um, obviously I've done this um, demonstration in class and now I'm just commenting over the top of it. So, addition of sodium hydroxide, what happens? Here I go, getting the dropper out, bringing it over and squirting it in. in three, two, there you go. All right, adding sodium hydroxide. I'll pause it here and you can see around here, this is where the sodium hydroxide is hit straight away. And straight away, you can see that this orange color of the dichromate is starting to fade away and you're getting more of this chromate ion forming. Um, the reason for this, or well, add the acid, we increase that, we got understood that. The reason why we're getting a back reaction happening and this dichromate ion um, moving, um, being used up, is because our OH group of our base, this is reacting with our H plus and removing it from the equation. The Chatelier says that the um, equation is going to do everything in its power to oppose whatever change we're making, in this case, removing this. So therefore, we're going to have a back reaction to replenish the amount of hydrogen that we've actually lost. So I keep playing that now, and you see um, the addition of the sodium hydroxide is making that orange color fade and we get a net back reaction happening because 
the removal of this um, makes the back reaction happen because Alicetilia said that it will try and replenish the stocks. And that's that one. Moving on to our next um, experiment, uh, demonstration, is our iodine um, reaction where we have our brown iodine and that's in equilibrium with this clear solution. All right, I'll just pause that there, um, which is HOI. Now, what I want to talk about is what we're doing here. Obviously, um, we've got the addition of something with our pipette and it's becoming clear. Is this going to be sodium hydroxide or is this going to be sulfuric acid? I'll give you two seconds while I press play and um, watch the magic of this stuff disappearing. And we'll talk about why you should have selected a certain thing. Again, it's to do with the um, H+. Um, that's a hint. And now you can see all that brown iodine is gone. And let's talk about which one we actually added there. Obviously, it was a Ford reaction that had to happen because it went from brown to clear. That means the amount of hydrogen here had to have decreased in order for this Ford reaction to happen. So what we had to have done is add in the OH. So the addition of the OH, it used up some of this hydrogen. So therefore, the iodine, the brown iodine, had to react to form this back again. So we had an initial decrease in hydrogen, and then as um, our iodine reacted again, it went back up again. And with that, we lost our iodine brown solution and we got our clear solution. And um, we had a forward reaction occur. Um, I'll move it forward a little bit to about here, just because um, it goes for a bit longer than I want it to. And now I'm going to add the um, sulfuric acid, which is going to increase the amount of H+, which should see our back reaction occur. And when I add that in, lo and behold, everywhere I drop my sulfuric acid, I form this brown iodine solution. Now, um, this occurs, well, pretty much like magic, which is awesome. And it can be used to help us a lot. And um, the idea of indicators works on this principle of equilibrium, that um, the addition of acids and bases can shift an equilibrium between a two different coloured solutions. So that is um, how Le Chatelier works in these two um, examples. I'm going to put up a couple more um, videos over the next couple of weeks. Um, every time I do a practical, I'm going to try and video it and explain it like this as well. So it can be put up on YouTube and you can all watch it. Check out the podcast as well, which is on Podomatic. It's also you can do it downloaded from iTunes. And it's all got about the VCE um, chemistry course. So yeah, um, until next time, take it easy and keep studying chemistry because it's awesome. Thank you.